We want to bring in our guest host on this very topic, Scott Sperling. What do you what do you think has happened here? And by the way, is it just a transformation because the, of the private, the public markets, which are now going to impact the private markets, or, or are they not? So, so I, I, number one, I think there's a focus on the fundamentals of businesses, not on necessarily a, a vision that cannot manifest itself what was in the, the reality. What, what do you really so, peg that to? Meaning there was a change over the past so, six months. I think around Lyft and Uber, the IPO, obviously, is when it happened. But clearly something else seemed to have, must so have happened. So valuations there. had gotten so out of hand in the later stage private market. Right. And we've seen this before. We saw this prior to the collapse in 2000. We've seen it in a number of other occasions over the course of the last 40 years where the late stage private venture market can get well ahead of where the fundamentals should value a company right. and then you see a correction. I think that's what you're seeing. It's not that Uber isn't necessarily a great company providing a great service. The question is what's the right valuation for the cash flows that that company can generate. With, um, with we, I think there was a fundamental question of whether or not the cash flows ever would uh, be there to justify anything close to perhaps even an $8 billion valuation. They do have a pretty good comp out there and it trades at less than half or about half of that value and it's bigger. And so I think that there's a reality that's been brought to bear and less credibility is being given just to who embraced this company in the uh, private markets and the vision so of a founder. So my question to you, though, you live in the private markets. Do you think private market valuations, broadly speaking, are just completely faked? Uh, I do not think they are faked. I but think this idea of smoking to... your own supply, this well, idea of, look, of, I, I, of up rounds that are basically your own rounds. So that, that, you know, that, that's uh, more characteristic in the venture world right. as opposed to the buyout world because we don't do multiple rounds. In the venture world, I do think there is that issue, and I think that issue has been exacerbated by the amount of capital uh, under the control of relatively few people who can continue to put money in and uh, do it. I want to ask about what I'm going to call a different F word. Do you think there's fraud involved in any of this? No, and, and not in the traditional sense that there's, there's something wrong with the accounting. But the reason I ask this is because you do have firms that are writing up, that writing up these, or, or historically marking up yep. their valuations, at the same time they're going out to raise new funds. And I won't even name the firms, I think people know what I'm talking about. Right. And I want to know whether you think that it's just that they are the most optimistic people in the world, or because there's more to it. Great question. I think that there is a mix of, uh, of those things that work there. Um, and, you know, I also think that, you know, you have a lot of people who've been who've come in recently to the industry who aren't of the industry. They haven't lived through the investing part. They've been more on the banking side of the world where you get paid for transactions. You don't get paid for the results of your investments. And it's been a big up market. So people just assume it's going to continue. Right. What, what is common, though, between the venture world and the private equity world is the inflow of dollars from various investors because right. of zero percent interest rates around the world. So in that sense, does that cause valuations to be simply pushed higher because there's so much money out there to be put to work? So it's, again, a really good question. I, I look at it on the buyout side. Um, the amount of money raised has been dwarfed by the value of the targets, the, the potential companies that you can buy. And, you know, we've had this question for the 40 years I've been doing this. You know, there's always too much money chasing too few, few deals, yet the long-term results in, in the buyout world uh, have been about 600 basis points higher than if you invest in the S&P 500. And when you compound that over long periods of time, that's a huge gap. When you look at the venture world, it's been much more great years, really spectacular, and then lots of down ones. Now, one of the reasons for that is there's only so many companies that are going to be winners in any given area. There's only going to be Uber and maybe Lyft. You're not going to have the 30 other companies that all the venture firms with all this money invested in in the same space survive. And so when more money po pours in, what happens is you have a lot of, uh, the number of companies in any given space increases dramatically. And we know from history that there's almost always only one, maybe two winners at most. And so that's why the returns tend to drop significantly when that money uh, comes in on the venture side.